Okay, this will be your 2019 legislative update. Going to focus on quagga zebra mussel issues mostly. There's a lot of invasive language scattered throughout um, the different funding bills, which you'll see and couldn't get it all. There's a lot of carp stuff, and um, so I tried to do QZ focus. Um, so here we go. Um, so you remember from last year, SO3021, actually after our annual meeting last year, the president signed the WERDA bill um, into law. I think it's actually called WIFIA, but we always refer to it as WERDA. Uh, in there, there's additional money authorized. I uh, see the $110 million. I think that's up from 40 from the older versions. Um, for watercraft inspection stations and monitoring. And so the original language had actually the four states listed of the Columbia River Basin. Now it says Columbia River Basin, and uh, we got friends now. Um, Upper Missouri Basin, Upper Colorado Basin, South Platte, and Arizona. And as you know, Arizona doesn't exist. It was a type error. Uh, um, a staffer in DC thought that um, AR was Arizona. So that's how that happened. Um, so now the Arkansas, and I'll talk about, um, this is kind of an unofficial basin map now of what we're looking at, and Arkansas has not been fixed. Um, in this edition of As the Court Turns, the latest opinion is um, this needs to be changed legislatively. Is that kind of right, Marvin Shutters? That's correct. That's correct. Don't... Right, so there is a legislative fix, hopefully this year. Um, we ran into the same thing actually in the Columbia River Basin on a kind of a similar issue, so it, it'll all work out I think in the end, but this is something that we'll be paying attention to and trying to get this changed. With this expansion, I, is it 12 states added, Marvin, something like that? So we're up to I think about 16 states now that are covered, and that uh, doesn't include that little sliver of Minnesota that's in there. So, um, talk to Marvin Shutters about uh, the WERDA and the rollout. Okay, federal appropriations, FY20. Um, good for you federal employees that the president signed the minibus, um, which was in a defense spending bill, but it also importantly contained a continuing resolution to keep the government open through November 21st. And then what is gonna happen? Will there be a shutdown? Armageddon more continuing resolutions, or will we get really lucky? This is, this is hell Michigan. So if hell freezes over, maybe we'll get a budget agreement. Um, the thing, let's see, am I going it in here? Oh, let's keep going. Um, remember, so I don't forget, last year, FY19, the energy and water budget passed, and the president signed it in September. Then they went along in a continuing resolution, then, the, um, there was a government shutdown, which interior people were home or driving Uber. The core people were in their offices in BOR because of that energy bill. So we're really gonna pay attention to what happens in the next three weeks, and I think I may have more information on that as I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, the House has moved fairly quickly on their spending bills. Um, BOR, core, interior, and its departments. Um, these funding bills have all been passed out. The Senate is behind. They've got energy, water, uh, interior, EPA. Those are just, they've just gotten out of committee. Um, they have not gone to the floor. And for the Corps of Engineers, and this is what a lot of you I know are interested in, in the House, they went to, and this is something we requested as states, um, from $5 million to $15 million dollars and then monitoring from $1 million to $3 million. Um, and then in the Senate, they left it flat, $5 million and $1 million. And so what they'll do when they go to conference, hopefully we'll end up with $15 million. Maybe we get 10. But that's going to need to fund all the states that qualify for the word of funds with a new language um, from word of last year. Um, and just so I don't forget, there, there's rumblings of a word of 2020, which makes sense. It was done in 14, 16, 18, so it will probably be done in 20 as well. It's a really popular bill. Um, so, Flowering Rush, one of my faves. Okay. 
So two years ago, FY17, um, Oregon, we Merkley widened, put in funding for control of flowering rush. However, because of the, the way it was worded, Oregon couldn't access the funding because it was only for control. But the infestation in Oregon waters is actually core waters. And so they couldn't use it. So we tried to fix this, and we did. So we got the words, monitoring and surveys done. So when the next work plan rolls out, we'll be working with Walla Walla and the states, in the Columbia River Basin anyway, um, this will allow the state of Oregon to access those funds, if all this goes through in the FY20 appropriations bill. Um, also, the Corps gets $2 million in this Senate version um, for their facilities. So there you go, Marvin. Some more money for you. Um, and as I mentioned, this, this energy water has a chance for passage in October. They're talking about it. I would think that I, I can't do the under over. I, I bet on the Dodgers, for God's sakes. Um, <laughs> so interior, a lot of you are interested in this. This is Fish and Wildlife Service on the House side. This has been passed. This is good. Um, it's five million above last year. It includes more money for AIS plans. Uh, it includes more money for um, uh, QZAP. Um, the Jewel of the West, Lake Tahoe, gets more money. Um, and of course, there's CART money in there too. So this is, this is pretty good. In the Senate, a little different, um, but they went to $38 million. And that's $16 million above um, last year. And gee, I wonder where the money's going. Oh, Asian carp, right. Um, carp people got in this, uh, the Great Lakes and, and you know, Missouri, Mississippi as well. There's a bunch of money in there for carp. Um, and then something that, I, I think this was our idea, Dennis, um, and Nate and others. They want to, in the Senate, the service should consider the utility of creating a dedicated funding source for Asian carp. And here's $4.4 million for that. Nice. Okay, some other agencies, BOR. Um, Heidi talked about this. They, there's money in the FY20, it's just not in the report language. Um, how much it is, don't know yet. Um, so sometimes the report does not show how much money goes to specific programs. Um, both House and Senate. It's just, there's nothing on quagga and zebras. Uh, National Park Service, $3 million, both House and Senate, Bureau of Indian Affairs, Blaine, you'll like this. Uh, House is at $8.7 8 million, $2 million above um, last year. Senate, only $1 million. Um, and here's interesting, you've been following uh, National Invasive Species Council and ISAC. Um, the House has $1.2 million for Invasive Species Council, and I believe the, the President's budget had like $600,000, but don't pay attention to the President's budget. Um, the Invasive Species Council in the Senate, though, gets, has nothing, but I got a feeling it'll all work out um, in the end, and NISC will survive. Um, <clears throat> some multi-agency directives, these are just, they, if you don't follow budgets, what they do in the report language is they put in uh, statements um, to help guide agencies. Um, the EDRR, this has been in for several years. They want agencies to report back on EDRR. Um, it's gained traction over the last few years, so it ends up seem, seemingly every year um, as report language. Um, and this is this one down below here, this non-intrusive zebra mussel elimination. This is, and there's similar language in the, in the House Interior Appropriations Report as well. Um, so you want to kill stuff that do not result in harmful secondary products, byproducts such as algal blooms. I don't understand this. Um, it, and it needs to show immediate economic benefit. Um, I don't know how this language got in here. And I've been kind of asking people over the last few months, what is this? And so if you know, talk to us, because this is something that may affect how we do our management. We may want to go back to Congress and say, what are you, what are you doing? You know, let's, um, maybe we can tweak some words and make this useful. Um, 
more Senate's telling the Fish and Wildlife Service to do competitive grant funding and to cooperate, support research, monitoring, mitigation efforts, and that's what they're doing. But as more money comes in, what the appropriators are telling U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service is, hey, uh, play nice and share. So, and they are already doing that. <clears throat> so what are the next steps, federal budget? Senate needs floor action. House, Senate, then go to conference. Um, if it's agreed to by both chambers, then it goes to the pre uh, president and then the games begin, or uh, even before that, so we'll see. Th that shutdown the last year affected us all. It was bad. Um, so hopefully that will not be repeated. Okay, some other AS reg uh, legislation. We, uh, Robin Draheim, she, um, a contractor and works under the commission, she keeps the um, spreadsheet of uh, congressional activities related to AIS. There's also some aquaculture stuff in there and harmful algal blooms and other stuff we're following at the commission. Um, but you can go to westernaas.org regulations, scroll all the way to the bottom and you can go to the spreadsheet and see all the bills that have been introduced. Most of them which will never pass, but it's interesting to track them. And there's a picture of the spreadsheet. So um, what has passed? Uh, the Save Our Seas, this is actually from the last Congress, signed 10, 11, 18. Yeah, so that was last time. Um, I wanted to show this because um, on invasives and things like marine debris, you get um, strange bedfellows, uh, Don Young and Susan Bonamici, opposite sides of the political scale, and they both um, signed on to the same thing with WERDA. You'll get everybody signing on if, um, it doesn't you know, mess with their uh, way of viewing life. Um, as Hillary's already talked about this, this is the John Dingle bill. Um, it includes the Theodore Roosevelt Genius Prize. And Hillary, I looked, I couldn't find that million dollars, but um, it, it could be in there. You know, I Genius Prize in this group, I don't know. Um, so we'll see, hopefully it's there. I, I, I've heard it's there too, but I just couldn't find it. Um, so there's that. Um, the biggie for the coming year that <clears throat> I know the Association of Fish and Wildlife Agencies is all over this and just about every state in this room except one up north, um, Rawa. This is some serious money. Uh, one, that's billion, $1.3 billion beginning in fiscal year 2020 um, and it may be used for invasive species. So that's good, huh? Um, I, this is not gonna go this year, and we'll see what happens next year. But this is like, uh, for those of you that rely on sport fish restoration funds, Wallop Bro, Dinkle Johnson, Pittman Robertson, this is right up there. So this, this will be helpful for us, I think. And that's all there is, thank you. Questions? Stephen, what's, what do you see as holding up RAWA? Is it just the political process, or is it always seems like, oh, it's there, we're getting all these people signing on, it's bipartisan, everybody loves it, but, but, but. Um, I think it's the $1.3 billion, and I think they're moving some royalties around, oil and gas royalties. So that may be a concern with fiscal conservatives. Um, usually, this type of big bill, they deliberate for a while and pass it in the, second session of the Congress. So next year, you know, it got, um, you know, last I think it got like 130 House members to sign on. So it's gonna get more this year by the time it's done. So I, I think we got a decent shot at it for next, for 2020. Is Rawa only for states? Good question. Let's see. Hmm. I'll, I'll look when I get back to my computer. And that's a good question. Hopefully it's tribes too, Blaine. Anything you want to say about Rawa? Thank you.